Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and we're taking a look at the World 3 skill Trapping. The main stats we're looking for are Trapping Efficiency, and another stat that's not listed here, which is the Shiny Critter Chance. Trapping Efficiency is needed to increase the amount of critters you get across all maps, and Shiny Critter Chance increases the chance to get Shiny Critters, and this stat is only shown in the trap interface when you're replacing or collecting your traps. So to unlock hunting, you do need to complete a few quests from the Lord of the Hunt, who's located in World 3 Frostbite Tundra in the Trapper's Folly map. The first quest requires you to collect 10 Shrap Shells from Snellbees, 12 Snake Skins from Baby Boas, and one Cardboard Traps from buying it in the World 3 vendor. Once you've collected these three items, you can start your second quest, which requires you to collect 100 frogs and one poison frog. This is actually the start of trapping, but once you complete this quest, it allows you to trap for that critter across all of your characters. There are a few other quests from the Lord of the Hunt, and these quests are required to access new trapping areas with different critters. So when you first start trapping, you'll only be able to use the cardboard traps and this is limited to one trap at a time, but it can be upgraded to two using alchemy, but more on that later. So to place a trap down, you have to navigate to the map you want to catch critters on, and frogs are located in the jungle perimeter in World 1. Once you're here, you simply click Place Trap in the top left-hand corner, and this menu pops up. So let's go over all of this information now. First is these arrows at the top allows you to select which of the traps you want to use. As you level up to the higher tiers of traps, you'll be able to use that tier of trap and anything before it. So the next thing is the number of traps placed. This is because you can place traps individually and you can have it placed on like frogs and then crabos. So you can have traps collecting multiple critters at the same time. The next is the rewards box. And you see this tells you how many critters you'll gain as well as how much EXP you'll gain. Next is the timers for your box, and these timers are how long it takes before you can collect your trap. Each of these timers has a different multiplier for quantity and EXP here. As the timers get longer, the bonuses to your EXP get shorter, and sometimes the quantity gets higher though, so you can gain more critters or more EXP. However, make sure you're selecting a time that you can collect this trap without wasting a whole lot of time with it sitting there completed. If you select the silk skin boxes, instead of having the EXP multiplier, you'll have a shiny bonus multiplier. So you'll get more shiny critters, but at the cost of less EXP. And the last piece of information is at the very bottom and it's the bonus critters from efficiency. So as you gain more efficiency, you'll start gaining a larger multiplier for the number of critters that you get. When you unlock the higher level traps, the timers will change as well. So you won't have the 20 minute timers anymore. It starts at three hours, but it can go up to five days, which can really help you collect a lot of EXP here or a lot more quantity of the critters. Once you've selected the timer that you want to use for your traps, simply click on it again. So double click it and it will place a box trap underneath you. To place the next trap, you'll have to move over to the side and go back in and repeat the same process. You can get these very close to each other, so eventually you can have six or even eight traps along this platform. The next piece of information to go over is when you click on the trap itself, it shows you the number of critters you'll receive, as well as your shiny chance here, as well as the remaining time on this trap. Once this timer has counted down to zero, this will then show a highlighted collect button and then you can collect it. But once you collect it manually, you do have to place the trap down manually. So now that we know how to place our traps, let's go over a few tips and tools to make things a little bit more efficient. First is to remember you can place traps on all of your characters, and that's a lot of traps going at the same time. Each trap can be placed in any location, so you can place them all on one critter or all over the map and spread out however you want to. The second tip is your trapper drone in World 3. This is unlocked using the construction workbench and it is one of the best features added to the game recently. And it allows you to place and collect traps remotely. Simply take each of your characters to the trap, 
select the critter that you want to, and then place the traps here. Once you click place traps, it's the same menu that we went over before. You can also collect all of your traps here, and it brings up the same menu that Eagle Eye has that we'll go over next. Lastly, you can delete all of your traps for that character as well. Next is the Hunter's Eagle Eye. The Eagle Eye is a talent in tab three for the Hunter, and it allows you to assign this to the attack bar. And once you click on this menu, it shows you all of the traps placed for all of your characters. It shows you how many traps are placed on each critter, the timer left for that critter, and once they're available to collect, you can collect all using this button. This button will not only give you all of the critters from all of your traps, but also automatically replace all of your traps in the same location. And the last tip is that remember when you place a trap, it snapshots your EXP, your critter gain, and your shiny chance. So make sure you're using all of the bonuses you can before placing a trap. Once they are placed, you can go back to your combat resets or whatever else you are using. Just remember that if you have a large gain in efficiency, you will need to delete all of your traps and then replace them to gain the new added benefit. Let's talk about how to increase your stats and efficiency now. First, for your gear. For your primary pieces of gear, you just need to get as much agility as you possibly can. The rings, you want to use the Rex rings, which gives you a bonus to skill efficiency, and these are acquired from the Dungeons Flurbo Shop. For your tools, you just want to use the highest tier of trap that you can, as this gives you more trapping power, more agility, and it allows you to place more traps. For the food, there's only one that's worth mentioning, which is the Critter Num Nums, and this increases your shiny odds, but they are consumed every time you collect a trap. So on to your talents next. The Hunter class specializes in trapping, so for his talents, you first want to get your Eagle Eye to the highest level possible. At level 1, you will only gain 50% critters and 40% to EXP. As you level this up higher, it does scale, but it does require 200 points in this talent to be able to get 100% of the critters and still only gain 80% of your EXP. However, it does give EXP to all of your characters at once. Next is your invasive species, and this gives you more trapping efficiency based on how many frog critters you have in your storage. Next is shroom bait, and this gives you more EXP gain. However, I usually avoid it because I don't want to outlevel my maestro. Next is reflective eyesight, and this increases your shiny critter chance for every 10 trapping levels you have. Next is your agility again, which gives you more maximum talent for quickness boots in tab 1. Next is shoe full of ovals to give you more agility from your ovals. On to tab two, our priority is going to be the yeah, I already know, which allows you to get more EXP again. Again, this is a personal choice. If you don't want to outlevel your maestro, it might be wise to avoid this. From there is focus soul. Again, an EXP gain talent, personal choice if you want to use this or not. From there, it's your sanic speed to give you more base agility and your garb of unaging quality to give you more agility from your equipment. On to tab one, your priority is going to be elusive efficiency for more efficiency in your specialized skills, and then your quickness boots to give you more base agility. Everything else here is pretty much extra. On to your star talents tabs, your priority is going to be super source to give you more base efficiency, and then your toilet paper postage to give you more skill efficiency from your stamps. From there, Will of the Eldest is nice to give you more base stats. And then lastly, Frothy Malk gives you more bonuses to your foods. Next, let's take a look at your cards. And your priority should be the Crabbo card as well as the Dung Beat card as both of these give you more skill efficiency. From there, you want to take a look at the Frog card, the Mousy card, and the pingy card, as each of these give you more shiny critter chance. There is one more from World 4 Fishing, which is the Blobfish, and it also gives you more shiny chance. Your next priority should be getting the Chaotic Troll card, as this gives you all skill efficiency. And from there, you're choosing if you want more skill EXP or more base stats like agility from the Block card here. 
For your card sets, you definitely want to get the easy resources for more skill efficiency. On to Alchemy next, and your priority is going to be Call Me Ash, as this allows you to place one additional trap and gives you more trapping efficiency. From there, Cause I Catch Em All will give you a higher chance to catch shiny critters. From there, you want to get the Sanic Tools to give you more skilling power from your traps. It does only say catching nuts, but it does affect your trapping efficiency as well. And lastly, for your bubbles is the Swift Steppin, as this can give you more base agility. For your vials, your priority should be Fur Refresher and Orange Malt, as they both give you higher shiny critter chance. If you can get Poison Tincture, this gives you more critters when you use Eagle Eye. And if your trapping is high enough and you can get the Honkers, you can unlock Goosey Glug, which gives you more base critters from your traps. Don't forget about your obols, as these can be a great way to increase your trapping power as well as give you more agility. For my personal tab, I usually fill this up with as many trapping obols as I can and then fill out what I can't grab with more agility obols. The family tab is shared between all of your characters, but it can be a nice way to get another boost to your trapping across your account. Up next is the post office, and in the second upgrade tab, you can unlock the trapping lockbox. This can give you up to 33% more trapping efficiency. At 25 boxes, you'll start gaining more trapping XP, and at 100 boxes, you'll start gaining more critters trapped. Of course, we have to talk about stamps next, and in the skills tab, about midway down, you have the Heidi box stamp, which gives you more base trapping efficiency. The Perp Frog Stamp, which gives you a higher shiny catch rate. And then your Spike Mouth Trap can give you more trapping EXP gain. For your statues, make sure you're collecting plenty of your box traps, as these can give you more trapping power. And it is also worth mentioning the Feasty Statue, as this can give you more food effect for your Critter Num Nums. Don't forget to grab your upgrade from the Golden Statues, as this makes your statues account wide. Another great benefit comes from the World 3 Prayer Obelisk, and this comes from two prayers. First is Skilled Dimwit, and this gives you more skill efficiency at the cost of less skill EXP gain. At base, this is 30% skill efficiency for minus 30% skill EXP gain. This can be upgraded to higher levels for more efficiency, but it does cost quite a bit of Forest Souls. Skilled Dimwit really pairs well with the Maestro's right hand of action as the Maestro gives you more efficiency as long as your trapping level is lower than his trapping level. The other prayer that's worth mentioning is Shiny Snitch and this gives you a chance to drop 20 shiny critters instead of one at the cost of shiny drop chances now 15 times lower. The next thing to talk about is the World 4 cooking skill, and this allows you to gain more skill efficiency as early as unlocking corn. This gives you 2% skill efficiency per level of corn, and there are multiple things that increase skill efficiency throughout the menu as you get to higher cooking levels. And the last thing to talk about is the laboratory in World 4. In your console, you do have the option of selecting a few chips. The ones that I recommend are using the total skilling efficiency for all skills, as well as the base efficiency for all skills. And then a kind of niche one is this chip right here, which doubles the bonus of any cards equipped in the bottom right hand corner. There is another similar one that doubles the bonus for all of them in the top left hand corner. So it's a great way to get more efficiency out of your cards. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content and a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me and we'll see you next time.